I'm always curious who's going to say hello first, right? It's like it's like some of you guys fight it out there. Like, uh, but it looks like Danny Cachamilio got there first. Happy Monday, Mr. Danny Cachamilio and uh, Carl Freeman. Also, happy Monday to you guys. Thanks so much for being here, boy. It's like do you have this. Uh, do you have me put in your calendar, or do you just know that it's Monday, three thirty? No matter what, I will be here, right? And I appreciate you guys being here as well. Uh, yeah, happy Monday, and um, I say happy New Year again. Happy New Year! Like we're good, right? Like we're gonna be okay. Like we just keep pushing. Let's go, keep going forward, one step. I know it feels like ahead and then back and ahead and back, but we're here. We're here. We're right here, so we're okay, right? Um, what? So, what are you doing to keep yourselves entertained over the weekend? What movies? What? Um, um, what movies are you guys watching? I, I'm really curious. I've been watching, uh, well, Jennifer watches Yellowstone, OMG. Like, don't talk to her at all. Do not speak to Jennifer when she is watching Yellowstone. Are you guys watching Yellowstone? <laughs> uh, I tried to come on your Amazon show, but hospital I say spot. Oh, that's okay. I appreciate it. Yes, I did my uh, Amazon Live earlier today. Uh, you work. You just work? Dan, you got this new house. You, you probably got like kick butt internet, or at least you claim to. I don't know what happened the other day. <laughs> we were trying an experiment from the Sarnia Sting. Um, thanks to Hughes Intelligence for allowing us to use our hockey suite. And as media, we're allowed to be there. And thanks to the Sarnia Sting for uh, partnering with us and, and supporting us as well. Uh, we tried to do kind of a video chat watch party. And um, uh, I don't know. We were having some technical issues. Jay Peckham couldn't make it, so we just talked about him. We just talked about Jay because he wasn't there to defend himself. Um, but I, I'm curious what what Netflix shows or uh, net. Well, let's let's do this: Netflix or Amazon Prime Video. I don't have a producer. What are you watching? Tell me, folks, what are you watching? Uh, like I said, with Jennifer, like, don't, like, yeah, don't, uh, don't interrupt her during Yellowstone. It is pretty awesome. I have to say, I, I didn't watch it. Well, here's here's another thing. If you have a, a spouse or like girlfriend, boyfriend, like if you have a friend that you watch a show with, like Cobra Kai. Oh my goodness, who's watching Cobra Kai? Who has watched Co who hasn't watched Cobra Kai? Please tell me you've watched Cobra Kai. Tell me you know what Cobra Kai is. What are we watching? Netflix or Amazon Prime Video? What are you watching? Uh, we started, so I got in trouble for this. Jennifer and I, New Year's Eve, we watched Cobra Kai, <clears throat> which worked out great. And I didn't know, like, it was like the first. Other than last year, first time in, in like, like I didn't know what to do because I've always worked New Year's Eve, <laughs> so I didn't have a clue. Um, so we watched Cobra Kai season one and two, and then when she wasn't looking, like I work at home, right? So I take breaks. <laughs> I took a break, and I watched the rest of the season of Cobra Kai without Jennifer, and. Um, she, well, she kind of gave me stink eye when I told her. She came home. I See, I can't. I don't lie, right? I don't lie to my wife. Um, she uh, came home, and I said, hi, honey. And she just saw this. She's like, what would you do? <laughs> I was like, I watched the rest of the season of Cobra Kai. She's like, what? <laughs> she eventually forgave me. But, you know, I, I, I guess she's not supposed to do that. It's like, well, we'll watch that together. But that being said, like, she didn't wait to watch Yellowstone with me. I don't know. <laughs> so you're Netflix, Danny. Okay, Netflix. Do I have January 24th booked to watch Heavy Rescue 401? Yeah, right? Uh, Heavy Rescue 401? No, I don't. I don't have it in my calendar, but I just knew that. <laughs> I kind of knew that. Right? Um and uh, but I, I now when I say I knew that, um, I only 
knew like i didn't know any sooner than anybody else like we didn't like i wasn't told ahead of everybody else i just figured it out right so yes heavy rescue 401 will return on discovery channel on january the 24th which uh again i believe let me double check but i'm pretty sure that's a tuesday oh it's a monday there you go so is it mondays this year i haven't i haven't read the email yet <laughs> i don't know you tell me it's a monday 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 as long as it's not on during the show if it's on during the show, and you know what i was going to change the time of the show to seven o'clock monday nights but if heavy rescue 401 is on i'm not changing a thing <laughs> i don't want to do that because then what would be the point because everybody would be watching heavy rescue and why wouldn't you Dom says Netflix, Titans and Blacklist. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm not caught up on Blacklist. I have to uh, I have to get caught up on that. And Titans, um, I might have started watching an episode of that. See, I have to be careful. I can't, I can't like, I can't get hooked on this stuff because, like, I work at home, right? Because, like, okay, Cobra Kai. Like it was New Year's Eve, and then when Jennifer, I think it was the, it was the Tuesday she went back to work, right? So it was the fourth, and I was still kind of like, I was still on holidays, so I spent the whole day watching Cobra Kai. I didn't do any work that day, uh, which I normally wouldn't do. But I can't get hooked on these things because then I wouldn't get any work done, right? <laughs> uh, so I got to be careful. All right, but I will take your recommendations. I will take your recommendations. I'm watching uh, what's um, the protege. That was pretty cool, and I, I like watching older movies too. Like I watched one from 2005 with uh, Charlize Theron. I believe that's how you say her name, and that was uh, North Country, right? Uh, and that was good. So it's nice to go back and watch some older movies, right? And then I started watching some movie called Uncle Drew, and I was just like. Got in, and then I was like, nah, this is it's way too predictable. It was a comedy, but it was way too predictable. And I was like, whatever, I'm not watching that. Okay. Uh, where are we at? Yes. Uh, got to say hello and thank you to our supporters, as we always do. Hughes Intelligence uh, Security Specialists, um, thank you so much for their support for several years, not just here on the show, but supporting our Sarnia Sting broadcast, which we're going to talk about coming up. Our friends at Joe's Discount Tire always supporting us. And I know we haven't had a ton of it, but the snow is coming. I'm sorry, but it is. Um, make sure you got the right tires on there. Go down and see them at Joe's Discount Tire, just at the foot, I like to call, at the bottom of the hill of the overpass on Indian Road. Tell them I sent you along. Uh, our friends at uh, AG Event Graphics Group of Companies and here in Science SWO for their support for 10 years here on the show. Thank you so much to Guy and all the staff there. And our friends at Tourism Sarnia Lampton supporting us here and at our Sarnia Sting broadcast as well. Really appreciate them. Visit them online on Ontario's Blue Coast. And we'll probably have Mark Perrin back here soon to talk about what's coming. Like, how do we keep doing tourism with the lockdown on and everything else? But I know they've got some things going on, so I'm excited for that. But please visit our sponsors online to show them your support and to thank them for their support uh here on the show as well because without them like probably wouldn't be bringing the show here every week so thanks so much to our sponsors all right we did uh we had fun at this well i had fun at the sting game i think um i think danny cochamilio uh had uh uh fun sort of on the uh at the Sting game. We tried to have him in video chat. I don't know. We had some freezing, but he wasn't even watching the game. Come on, Danny. Why were you there? <laughs> right? And uh, my first guest coming up in a few minutes is Disney Plus. Dope Sick. Yes. I just finished watching that yesterday. Wow. Uh, what a wake-up call. And you know, I don't, I don't know. Well, we'll talk about that a little bit more when our first guest comes up, and, and I'm sure she'll have something to say about that one. Um, but yeah, we were at the Sting game. I was at the Sting game uh, in the Hughes and Intelli Hughes and Intelli last day with Blue Hughes Intelligence Security Specialists uh, Hockey Suite. We were able to be there, and we did a video chat. Danny was there, sort of. Um, but congratulations to Sarnia Sting coming out five to three over Flint Firebirds, which I think surprised some people. 
Um, Flint, strong team, and um, Sting struggled against them in the past. They had three goals in the second period, the Sarney Sting did, all within about 40 seconds to a minute of each other. That gave them a strong lead to finish off uh, 5-3. Now, coming out of the gate, I have to say, and we, we heard um, General Manager uh, Dylan Sika uh, speaking with Lee Cunningham from CHOK, and the question was asked, you know, there's no fans in the stands, so it's just us media there, um, and there was like the sound effects of the crowd roaring through the PA. But what's that really like as a hockey player? You, How much of that energy do you feed off of the fans? Now, you listen to some uh, hockey players, they'll say, you know, you don't hear a lot always, but when the fans really get going, of course you do. Nobody was holding back. The Sting played very well. They brought a lot of energy right out the gate. They knew they had to if they were going to win against the Flint Firebirds, and they did an excellent job, and they they were moving. and you could just tell that they were out, both teams, quite honestly, out to win as Flint came in with the first two goals in the game in the first period. So that left the Sting going back to the uh, locker room uh, before the second period going, okay, how are we going to regroup and come out? And they come out with a bang and they kept the vertical pedal on the right down all the way through the rest and finished off very well at five to three. So we will be back there on Wednesday once again, and I will be live from the Hughes Intelligence um, hockey suite. Unfortunately, I'm not allowed to show the game, but you can watch along with our friends on Kojiko at your TV Sarnia, which is what we were doing. We were watching along and kind of kind of watch partying uh, the game. And then, of course, uh, you can also listen in with Lee Cunningham and Pat DeRoshery on CHOK. And we had the post-game conference after the uh, game was over and uh, Chandler Romeo a new player to the Sarnia Sting, and also Marco Sikic was there, who both played very, very well, and they were excited to be talking to us after. So keep an eye on that. Congratulations, Sarnia Sting, and uh, thanks again to the Sarnia Sting for allowing us to be there in the moment. All right. Well, we're going to talk. Uh, there's there's something serious we're going to talk about here today. Our, our friends uh, Margaret Capes and Kareem Thompson, I think they're ready to join us here. And uh, I want to make sure. Let's see. We've got, uh, there's Kareen Thompson. Hello, Kareen. Hello, how are you today? I'm doing very good, and I'm going to see if we can, we can. Margaret? Yes? I can't see you. Okay, let's see. I think we're looking at the carpet. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Just a minute. <laughs> okay, no, we're pressure. We're, we're no live. What I can even say, no pressure, we're live. <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay. Oh. She disappeared on us. Well, we'll give her a moment. I'm sure she'll work her way back here. So uh, maybe Corinne, we're going to. Oh, is she back? <laughs> She's trying. She's trying Still again. On the ball. Yeah. Turn your camera around. There'll be a little, uh, little Probably icon. That would help. There, in the top corner, there should be a little icon you can tap. Or is it, I don't know if it's top corner or right corner. Mine's on the bottom, so I got okay. nothing. <laughs> I think, uh, Margaret, are you on mobile? Uh, nope. You're on your desktop. Yep. Okay. Well, we can go with just sound. Yeah, let's do that for the moment, and I'll uh, I'll see what I can figure All out. All right. Here. Sounds good. Don't sweat it. <laughs> <laughs> you know I'm not going to, Dave. <laughs> right. No kidding. I'm counting on it. Well, welcome to you both here. Uh, I got to tell you... Um, when Margaret reached out to me about doing something, oh, she's gone again. We'll see if we get her back. But Corinne, uh, uh, I wasn't I wasn't aware of what we're talking about, and I think that's probably maybe part of the problem uh, and, and what we're discussing. But uh, before we get into what we're discussing, why don't you just tell everybody, uh, you know, what's involved here, the background, and uh, your involvement. Okay, so uh, we are started a petition for. Uh, a residential rehabilitation center for addictions in Sarnia. Uh, there's been a long-term um, kind of request and it's like supposed to be in the works for uh, funding for that type of a system or program in Sarnia, uh, which we are in desperate need of. Mm -hmm. um, so I um, took a course called the Social Justice Advocacy Course through okay. uh, Sarnia Community Law School, which Margaret Capes runs. 
um, and we decided to uh, proactively do something about this. So that's where the petition came about and we're meeting with Bob Bailey and trying to get things moving towards help for our so, friends and family. Yeah, okay. So we need a we need this addiction rehabilitation center in Sarnia Lampton. And interestingly enough, I think some people would say, what, we don't have that? Right, right. And they would say that. And they would say, well, what's Ryan's house doing, right? That Ryan's house is only a 30-day um, program. So there's, right. you've got people coming out of Ryan's house still waiting for beds um, outside of Sarnia. For yeah. Rehabilitation. Right. And Margaret's trying to, we're going to try to, hello, Margaret. Hi. We'll just go with, there. Hey, there. Hey. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a party. She's <laughs> on. So, uh, Margaret, thanks for uh, working that out. We were just talking to uh, Kareen there and sort of filling us in on the petition for this rehabilitation center. And, and where we kind of left off was, I said, even, I was like, like when you first emailed me, I was like, this this is a problem like i don't understand and what do you mean we don't have a rehabilitation center and then she was talking about ryan's home do you want to take it from there sure well you know we've got seven detox beds over at blue water health and that takes care of the initial detox phase of someone who's dealing with an addiction i'm sorry you said seven yeah seven. okay and then ryan's house opened up a year or so ago or and a bit ago and they um, allow folks to leave the detox portion of Blue Water Health, and then they, they go there for another 30 days, potentially. But the whole idea is that they'll eventually ship out to a location outside of Sarnia Lampton to enter longer term rehab. So traditionally, our area has been served by uh, uh, Brentwood in uh, Windsor and Westover in Thamesville and some of the London facilities. And so what this group is trying to argue for, and we're certainly not the first group, there's been tons and tons of people that have been trying to get this happening in this community for a very long time, um, is to get a standalone facility like a Westover, like a Brentwood, right in Sarnia Lambton. Right. Now let's uh, let's back up just a little bit and maybe tell everybody, um, you're part of the community law school here in Sarnia Lambton. Let's, uh, let's, let's, and, and I don't want people to think, oh, there's there's some ladies here that are doing trying to do something wonderful, which you are, but there's there's background to this. So let's yes. talk about what the law school is and, and what you okay. do. Sure. The community law school has been around for over 20 years in Sarnia Lambton, and we have been providing public legal education and more recently social justice advocacy uh, courses or learning opportunities to people in the in the community. Yep. And uh, that's those are all free of charge. And back in 2020, we started a, a six-week social justice advocacy program. And Corinne was one of our very first students in that program. And uh, part of what we what we talk about in those sessions is how to make change in our community by using different techniques like petitions, voting initiatives, uh, protesting, these types of things. Yeah. And a group of people came together last fall and identified the need for this facility to finally get the funding it needs uh, as an as a as a goal, as an interest, as a as a as a topic that they wanted to um, pursue. So Corinne and four other five other people are on the group that are working on this. But since 2020, we've had over uh, 200 people take the social justice advocacy courses with us wow. from all over the province. And they're making change in all of their communities in small and large ways. That's fantastic. So we're seeing positive results from this, which is great. Mm -hmm. um, I, let me, I, I'm kind of curious, though, and Corinne, maybe I'll come over to you on this. Uh, uh, you've obviously you've done some great learning with the uh, with the school. And, um, you know, Margaret mentioned in there like petitions and protesting and I think sometimes and correct. <clears throat> pardon me if I'm wrong. I. I uh, this isn't my field, but we hear those words like protest and petition, and there's are they a bit of come across like a bit of a swear word sometimes to people? Is that I think Margaret's laughing? I think, <laughs> right? Like, yeah, is, is that accurate to say? It's um in some sense, yes, I would yeah. say that some people would view it as. Uh... And I I say that <laughs> somewhat jesting, of course, but the reason what I'm getting at is. I think sometimes people hear those words and like, oh, here we go. 
Here's another, right? So in leading to what Margaret said, there's a proper approach to protesting and a proper approach to petitioning, right? So is that something that you learned from all of this? Yes. So it's something that's put forward in, in this school that we need to do this respectfully. There's a way that we can go about protesting, boycotting, you know, lobbying your officials, but doing it respectfully to have your voice heard. And, and that's what we're attempting to do here. Yeah. Um, th that's great. And I, I really just, I really wanted to point that out because uh, I think uh, so many of us in a day see a petition or something, or there's another pro, you know, right. Um, but I mean, we all have our opinions and we all have something personal that matters to you. Is there, is there in, in particular in this rehabilitation center, is there anything personal attached to either one of you for this as well? I'll let Corinne speak first and then I can chime in. Yeah, please. I'd say yes, absolutely. I've lost many friends, um, unfortunately, to addiction. Um, my family's struggled with addictions and um, I've got kids, you know, my my children's friends that are being raised without parents because they've been lost to addiction. Um, and it's very sad. It's very devastating um, mm -hmm. to witness. All right, Margaret. Yes. And I, to be honest with you, there's very few people in this community that I've spoken to that haven't been touched by addiction, especially the opioid crisis in the last mm -hmm. few years um, here and across North America. But um, I would say that uh, what I have noticed is a fair number of folks that are now raising grandchildren because their uh, their children have passed because of overdose uh, situations that probably could have been avoided or if proper treatment was available, they could have uh, maybe dodged that bullet. And, you know, mm -hmm. um, I said someone asked us recently, both Corinne and I in another setting, why now? Um all you have to do is open up the newspaper every night, Dave. It's right. it's it's rampant. It, it and it's it, I spent 30 years as a legal aid lawyer and half of that time here at Community Legal Assistance Sarnia and I can see a lot of folks the names of some of my former clients in there and friends and relatives in there uh some very close to me and I just I think it's time. It's there's no there's no more need for study. There's no more need for um needs assessments it's just the money needs to get here yeah. yeah i i unfortunately couldn't agree with you more that it does happen i i uh i probably get a message twice a week and that doesn't oh well, what's twice it's twice a week too many yeah and there's probably more going on than that and and you're right we're all affected by it um it had recently myself so um, and then I, uh, I want to ask you, you mentioned dope sick, you know, this, uh, this movie on, uh, mm -hmm. Disney plus, um, geez, I think, I think Disney and I don't think of watching something like dope sick, no. right? No. Like it used to be Mickey mouse. That's right. But, but we're not talking Mickey mouse here anymore. No. And this, I was, well, but when I watched it, I was like, I'm so glad that Disney put that out bearing the accuracy which you've obviously seen that is yeah. there a lot of accuracy in that movie yes it's actually uh loosely based on a book by right. beth macy, beth macy yeah. the book is excellent the the book ties a lot of the threads together between uh folks that are addicted uh physicians pharmacists and big pharmaceutical companies that are that were behind the initial push for oxycontin into the uh certain parts of the United States in particular, I think they were targeted. Absolutely. Um, and uh, although it's based on a U.S. story uh, that's very real, um, the same kind of thing's happening here every day. I mean, yeah. the, the people get addicted to Oxycontin and then, you know, they're at, their supply gets cut off for one reason or another. They hit into heroin and then we get into fentanyl. And probably the scourge of our lifetime is fentanyl. Yeah, you know, uh, interesting in that. In that, I had a hard time not getting emotional in that that mm -hmm. movie. I'm already an emotional person, so it's yes. for me to. I, I, anyway, I was just wowed by the facts and the story. Mm -hmm. And then I, I do. I look around where we live here. I've lived in Sarnia all my life, Sarnia Lambton, and you don't have to walk too far to just even see it. No. Um, and um, guilty in the past myself for feeling like okay. You're addicted to something. Okay, just go, just go get help. 
be strong minded, um, good support, blah, blah, blah. And, and you should be able to get through this. It'll be hard. I had no idea that it's, it's be, it's not just beyond like wanting to quit it or mm -hmm. wanting to get away from it. Mm -hmm. It's the chemical. That's right. It's, and I think Michael Keaton said it's poison. This is yeah. poison. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's also just to tie into what you just said there, Dave. Um, and I'm sure Corinne can, can, can attest to this as well. It, after a while, it's not about getting high anymore. It's about staying not sick. Right. And that's why that's the, the name dope sick. Uh, it's like people uh, are so addicted that when they try and come off, especially opioids, um, it's it's likened to a to to the most desperate illness that a person could ever experience. So that's why they continue to need to use to just avoid the sickness. And I think that's something that a lot of people don't realize. And that's why I think that's an excellent um, show, because it really personalizes it. And it it also um, causes us to really think that addiction is a disease. It's a mental health issue. It's not a criminal issue. And um, if we were going to have someone um, recover from a heart attack, for instance, we wouldn't put them on a 90 day time limit to do it the way yeah. some rehabs require people to do. People need long term recovery assistance to be able to heal from addiction. Yeah. And uh, so a rehab center is a start, but it, there's many, many services we need in this community to help for long term healing. I, I don't know how you feel about that, Corinne, but that's my thinking. Yeah, Corinne, I, let's let's hear more from you on that. Yeah, yeah I'd say that's entirely accurate. The withdrawals uh, that people experience when they're trying to get out of this sort of like lifestyle, right? And they, it's deadly a lot of the time it can kill you. Um, and then you've got, you know, there's a lot of societal um, views on this that are really negative. And like you said, Dave, uh, just thinking, okay, how can this, you know, just, just stop doing it, get, you know, get some supports or whatever. And yeah. it's, it's not that easy. And we do need extensive you know therapy for people that are uh, facing rehabilitation and uh housing support and just there's a whole web <laughs> of uh network that these people need yeah need. this isn't just about getting better or, or, or curing the addiction if that's the right term yeah I, okay. what about housing um yeah. and then because financial plays into this because uh, mm -hmm. if you need more it's not expensive and while it's not criminal it does lead to criminal activities Absolutely. to support the habit and so yeah. on. So there's just a real long domino, like I almost want to say an endless domino effect mm -hmm. or a circular domino effect, yeah. really um, up and down, up and down and around we go again. Right. So yeah. um, Corinne or, or whoever jump in any time here on this one. Uh, so in my understanding, there's money for this and it's been around already, but it, just has not been released. Am I saying that right? Yes. So why does that sound annoying? <laughs> it well, is annoying. I, I mean, I'm, not, I'm not a very patient person. I'll admit to that. You know, and this like, I don't long. understand. No. And this, you know, depending on who you talk to, there, these promises have been on the books for over 20 years. Like, and in particular, the last five years, there's been a lot of pressure. Um, and I, I, I'd like to get the dictionary out and, and look up the word imminent because <laughs> um, last fall, our group had a conversation with uh, Bob Bailey and he told us in that meeting that the funding was, the release of the funding was imminent. And then I read an article on the, on December the 31st in the observer where he said the funding is imminent to me, Dave, part of the reason I asked for us to be on your show is because Every day that goes by, someone else is getting addicted or dying or getting very sick from this disease. The yeah. word imminent doesn't really mean anything anymore. If, if months go by between, you know, the statement from our local elected officials saying it's imminent, it just, it's hard to believe. And I, I you know, I'll be very transparent. I said that to Mr. Bailey when I met with him, I said, I'm, I'm finding that hard to believe, very hard to believe. So the time is now to put the public pressure on. And I was so grateful that this group came together to, to take this on. Um, imminent. Yeah. 
<laughs> what's is, there's got to be are, are they giving you other reasons like why not like what do they need uh, have there been answers as to well we need to show this we need like you said we don't we don't need any more needs assessment come here give me your hand let's go for a walk yes i'll guide you right where it's happening um i didn't even realize till like about a year and a half ago some of the outdoor living societies that are happening in Sarnia Lampton mm -hmm. um, being caused by like um, I was out flying my drone one day mm -hmm. just for leisure. And I was like, what is that? OMG. <laughs> right. And you don't have to go far. And our children are walking around this as well and discovering mm -hmm. it not realizing that something like that's there. So that to me, okay, so I could probably rant here as you could as to why we need to get this done. Yes. So yeah. like WTF here, what's the problem? Well, I mean, I, I I can't speak specifically to this situation, but I do know how bureaucracies work. And I suspect <laughs> the, the funding has request has had to go through a number of hoops, right? Like the bureaucracy isn't going to just give you a check. So yeah. they're going to have to um, go through a lot of steps. Blue Water Health has put in the application for the funding. That's who it's who it'll be sent to once it's released. And I assume they've had to go through a lot of bureaucratic hoops to meet standards. And that's good. I mean, standards are important for these kinds of things. Well, but, there has but to be a process. Be told, it's time. It's just time. Yeah. Corrine, uh, sorry. And I'm sorry, ladies, if I got a little like... No! That's <laughs> As a, as a, I guess, a constituent and somebody yeah. who lives in this community, that really uh, uh, an, an annoying is a, is being polite while we're live. Uh, <laughs> but yep. uh, Corinne, um, you, you know, you had it, and I can hear your children playing back there, and that's okay, by the way. This is, <laughs> this, it's totally accepted in this live world now. Yes. So bring them on if you even. Uh, I'm, just, if you have I'm trying to mute and unmute. They're just screaming in the face. It's just, it's okay, right? Gross. Put them on your lap if you have to. We'll carry on. Um, what would you say? Could you add anything that Margaret's always, uh, or was, was just talking about there about, yeah, we got to get it done. But what's the holdup? Do you see? Yeah, it's, it's just the hoops, right? It's just persistent and ongoing hoops. Jump through this to get to here, to prove this, to line this up. You need your business plan or your, you know, your facility treatment plan. Um, and that's, it's all got to be set up and, and ready to go to show. But, but that sounds like that's being done. Am, am I right? Mm -hmm. So, okay. So here we are. Are we showing this to the powers to be? Are they seeing this so far? And they're still using the i word yeah imminent <laughs> yeah they're <Yeah. laughs> right. still using imminent yeah. yeah sure go with imminent <laughs> yeah I, I mean i think i think that they have everything they need they just need to sign off on it and yeah. we are in a pandemic i, I I'm, I'm honestly starting to get tired of the pandemic being used as an excuse for anything. yeah it doesn't work with and, you for anything yeah. yeah and so if we've met the standards and i I can't imagine we haven't because the people at Blue Water Health are very skilled at these things. Absolutely. Um, that uh, sign off and let's get going. I mean, I surely hope that this isn't a political issue, Dave. I mean, I don't want to start into this, but we're in the middle of a provincial election campaign, June 2nd. I was going to bring it up. Yep. And I just hope that this isn't being used as some announcement during the election campaign. That to me is beyond the pale. People are dying. People are getting sick. People are losing their families. They're losing their homes. This is not a political football. It cannot be. And so I think that's why we're so adamant that we're banging the drum now and that we're not waiting until June because every day counts in this fight. Well, unfortunately... I think you're probably, it, it, it probably, do you want to take, are we taking bets on this? <laughs> Maybe. Well, unfortunately, right. I, I, yep. I, I, I hear you. And I'm, I'm on the same page there with you, Margaret. I, uh, but unfortunately that's probably the way it will come out. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I guess at least something, if that does happen, but then again, a lot of times and we've seen it happen and it, I don't care what color your stripes are when it comes yep. to politics, We've seen stuff put out there, 
in the mental health world mm -hmm. of promises and then it pulled back yes. very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. what's the trust factor and all of that and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, that's it. we could do a two hour show on that one. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd be happy to quite honestly, if that's what it takes. Um, but moving forward now, we've got the petition out there. Um, I, I shared the link on our, on our, uh, our we're on, live on YouTube, we're on Twitter, we're on Facebook, we're everywhere today. Mm -hmm. um, and we've put that out there, folks. So take the time to click on the petition, read all about it. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I can't see why anybody wouldn't want to read it. But uh, what if they want, can they reach out to either one of you if they've got questions or anything? How would we do that? Yes, they're more more than welcome to get a hold of me. And Dave's got my email. If you want to post that, that's yep. great. Um, and I'll share it with the group. Corinne's on our planning group with, a, with about four or five other folks. And we meet uh, once a week. And we're talking about what the community is bringing to our attention around this. So we'd be more than glad to talk to anybody about it. Right. That's Corinne. Sweet. Anything you want to uh, add in here that uh, maybe we haven't covered yet today? And, and don't feel rushed. We'll take a whole hour if we have to. <laughs> uh, I think we've covered everything pretty well. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thanks for uh, uh, taking a break from being a mom to be here today. Uh, thank you. Well, she's not only a mom, um, she's a Lambton College accounting student as well. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. First you're day like, of the term. <laughs> you're like full-time and full-time. That's right. And, and whatever else. Time, I'm everywhere. You time for you? <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> a little bit. Okay. I squeeze it in there. <laughs> That's good. I do appreciate your time here. And Thank keep you. smiling because uh, uh, I think we will get there. It's, it's unfortunate yeah. we have to take this approach sometimes. But Margaret, mm -hmm. I'll circle back to you one more time if there's anything you want to add down some time. Yes. And I, I really want to thank the Sarnia Lambton community who have kind of come around and signed the petition so far. Um, I, I I have to tell you, it was Mr. Bailey that asked us to, to put the petition together. And we did it within an hour of him asking us to do it last November. So okay. um, I, he's obviously using it to try and put some pressure on. And so if it's important to you, if this problem has touched you, your family, your friends, your colleagues, your relatives, now's the time to sign. Yeah. And we've already seen some of our viewers telling me that uh, they've already read it and signed it. So um, one thank more you. signature, two more signatures. That's I'll right. be doing it right after this as well. So uh, thank you so much for what you're doing, ladies. And uh, I know you've got a team that you're working with as well. So thanks to them. Mm -hmm. uh, and reach out anytime, Margaret. I, I got right. you. you got my email. Don't be afraid to use it. You too, Corinne. Even oh, if it's yeah. just something I can share on the show every week that we can get the awareness on. I'm happy to do that because... Uh, too many people have been uh, affected by this personally, indirectly. It affects our communities overall as a whole too. So uh, uh, if I keep talking, I'll get too emotional about it because it just yeah. it's it's that it's that bad. So uh, thank, thank you again for what you do, and and really appreciate you being here today. Thanks, thank Dave. You. Thank You're you. You're welcome. Take care. Uh, thanks to Margaret and Corinne for joining us here at. at uh, I was, well, it's in an oddly sort of way, I was looking forward to this conversation. It's probably one I wish I didn't have to have with friends, but um, it needs to be done. So let's just go to the Facebook page, go to our YouTube. You'll see the link there. I posted it once. I'm going to post it again. Um, and let's, let's let this not be a problem anymore. So uh, we, we've got to do our part. And you can by signing. Go and check that out. It's on, uh, like I said on the Facebook page. It's, uh, yeah, I'm emotional because it has affected so many people that I know personally. And I know it's affected so many others in this community and around all communities. And it, it just, it shouldn't even be happening. Um, but that's why, once again, we need this uh, rehabilitation center. And we've got to get the petitions to the officials. And thanks to the, uh, the law school here in Sarnia Lampton for uh, the community law school for doing that. All right. Well, I want to thank you for tuning into this very special uh, edition here today on the show, and I hope you will take the time to do that. And I hope you will take the time to uh, kind of reflect on just uh, how we can all help other people who are suffering with addictions in our community beyond this rehabilitation center. We have to remove the stigma that's attached to people who are addicted to substances as well. They're not just criminals. While criminal activity may come from it, 
Um, there's a desperation that's happening out there and we can all do our part to make that better. Okay, rant over. Thanks to all of you so much for being here today. Please don't even worry about clicking the like button. Just click the share button as many times as you can to get this very important message around to other members of our community so they can learn about the petition and how we can bring this rehabilitation center to life. That's all the time I got for you this week. Have a great week and an even better weekend. I will see you next time right here in the show. Bye for now.